I'll start with a garage behind the house and the first thing I'm going to do is draw some converging lines as a guide for myself, a guide for size. The reason I'm doing this is that if I draw the garage and fit it exactly into these converging lines that I just drew, it would actually be the size of the house except appearing smaller because it's behind the house and farther back. So I'm using these lines as a guide for myself not to make the garage as tall as the house. I want it to be like a one-story garage. So I'll start out with the corner that's facing me. Converging lines from the top and bottom of that vertical line to the vanishing point. Then another vertical line for the back corner. Then to find the center so I can place the peak of the roof, I make a very light X from corner to corner, draw a vertical line as tall as I want the roof to be, right through the middle of the X. And then I do uh, slanted lines from that line to each corner. All right, some horizontal lines, and they stop at the house because the house is overlapping it. Another horizontal line for the roof ridge. And then I have to make the angle of that back part of the roof the same as the angle in the front. Okay, um, vertical line for the garage door, line converging with the vanishing point, and then another line. There'll be a road going in front of the house, and so I'm going to draw a line from the vanishing point down to where the edge of the road is going to be as it goes in front of the house. And so the space between the house and that line is the front yard of the house. All right, now the barn is going to be um, actually kind of at eye level, so you won't see the top or the bottom of it. And so the vertical line is going to go um, a little bit below the vanishing or the horizon line because the roof is going to extend a little bit above it. All right, now a very light X from corner to corner, and then a vertical line up through the X as high as I want the peak of the barn's roof to be. And that helps me with the placement of the peak. Now instead of having just a straight line going from that um, vertical line to the corner, it's going to be a broken line because the barn's roof, usually it's not just a, a straight slant, it's like a broken slant because it gives more room in the hay mow for the, the hay, actually. All right, and then I'll finish off the building the way I did the other two. Two um, horizontal lines, a vertical line, and then first the ridge of the roof, and then the angle of those the broken lines that has to match the angle of the front part of the roof for the barn roof. Erasing some of the lines that I don't want because they'll just be in the way. And then I will, just like I did on the other buildings, I'll make the door and the windows on the converging side by um, first drawing the edge closest to the viewer, converging line from that line, and then another vertical line. And then for the windows, I'll start with a line, and then draw converging lines all the way back to the vanishing point. And then I'll fit both windows right inside those converging lines. And that'll give me the windows in perspective. And use the converging lines to um, draw the top and bottom of the windows. All right, the silo is next. And so I'm going to draw two tall vertical lines that are parallel to each other for the sides of the silo. And that's usually quite a bit taller than the barn is, silos are. 
And this is actually going to be a drawing of a cylindrical form because silos are cylindrical. And so as soon as I get this line drawn here, I have to decide just how curved the top and bottom will be. Now, the closer to the vanishing or the horizon line it is, the less curved it'll be. And the farther away, both on top and bottom, the more curved it'll be. So I have to kind of um, judge how that's going to be. So I drew the oval there to help me, but now I'll erase the oval that's going through the inside of the silo. And I'll do the same thing on the top. Basically, I'll try to curve it and then make that oval will help me decide on the curve. And then actually the other side of the oval won't show and so that side is going to have to be erased. All right then, I'll draw a vertical line right up through the middle of the silo and that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. I don't think I'll need an X. And then a line slanting from each edge to the top of that line. And that'll give me what the top of the silo looks like. Okay, I drew the front of two other barn sheds when I was off camera because I didn't think you'd need me to show you how to draw those. So I'm just going to quickly line the corners of them up with the vanishing point and notice I have to skip over the barn in the silo and then add the angle of the roof and then I'll do the same with this other barn shed and I turned it up to um, um, fast forward because I'm sure you know how to do these by now. All right, and then the next thing I'll do is that I'll add a, a door. Now this will be like more like machine shed here, so it's gonna be a wide door, or it can be like a place for the cattle to go into. Line it up with the converging side, and then the door in this shed will be right in the side that's square with the viewer. All right, now I'll be doing a fence that um, goes out from the edge of the barn to the vanishing point or toward the vanishing point. So I first draw a vertical line that's um, the fence post. And then from the top and bottom of the fence post, I draw lines to the vanishing point and I'll have like three fence rails there. And the fence is going to end where I'm placing this other fence post. And I'll erase those extra lines that go to the vanishing point. And then I'll make a mark right in the center of that fence post by the barn. And from that mark to the vanishing point, I'll draw another line so that all of those fence rails are in perspective. Now the posts not only appear smaller as they go farther away, they appear closer together. And there's a, a way to do that to make it visually accurate. I start out with the two fence posts placed how I want them. And then I'll lay my ruler from the top of the one fence post through the middle of the other fence post. And then where my ruler comes out, That'll be the placement for the next fence post. And then I'll keep repeating the process. So from the top through the middle, down to the bottom rail, make a mark, and make the fence post. And again, from the top of one post through the middle of the other post, down to the bottom rail, and place the next fence post. And as I go along, you can see that each one's a little closer than the last one was.
Now I'll use the distance between those last two fence posts to be the distance between the fence posts that of the part of the fence that's going to go right parallel to the horizon line because that's about as far back as that back of the fence is going to be. Okay, the fence that's going across the back has to be parallel to the horizon line and it's going to be as tall as the smallest part of the fence that's going back toward the vanishing point. So it's going to be tiny and uh, I'll draw it with this mechanical pencil. I'll draw each one of the rails and try to make it match up with the other rails of the fence that's coming back toward the vanishing point. Okay, now the distance between the fence posts will be the same distance as the last two fence posts that are going back toward the vanishing point because that's about the right distance. So I just um, draw those in there vertically and try to keep them the same distance because they're not going back. All right, now um, I'm going to draw the road in front of the house. I think I drew it once before, but I'll darken it. It kind of got erased. And then I'll draw the other side of the road. And then I don't want it to go back into a point because normally unless you're standing on really flat ground, it doesn't look like that. So I'm going to erase part of it and then I'm going to make some you know, jagged lines across the back and that's just part of the ground. That's just some hills in the background. Across the road I'll put a row of pine trees and there's a lot of different ways that you can draw them but I'm just going to kind of outline them, um, make the lines jagged like it would be because they're not exactly smooth like you know those Christmas trees people draw. And uh, give it a little bit of a trunk and then erase the line that's in it. And then I'm going to make all of these the same height, just so that you see how to do that, even though they probably wouldn't be. So I, I draw the line from the top of the tree to the vanishing point, and then any other trees, what I need to do is just fit between those two converging lines. And uh, they'll be the right size to look like they're um, going back into the distance, but they're the same height of tree. Uh, that one's a little crooked. Okay, this one I'm going to just draw a straight line to start with. And then I'll build my tree around it, then it won't be crooked. Well, some trees are crooked. And then I'll erase that line that's in the middle of the tree. And the converging line that comes down. Next I'll draw a barbed wire fence behind the trees. So I'll start with the fence post that's up the you know the closest in the picture and actually give it a little bit of form. And then I'll draw my converging lines. Actually the wire is going to be a barbed wire fence from the vanishing point to that post. top and bottom first and then the one in the middle
Then as I draw the fence post going back, I'll just fit them within the, the wires and I'll be at the right height. And this time I'm just going to, um, as I draw back toward the vanishing point, I'm going to just make them each a little closer together as I go along. And it looks like the one in the front, I think I need to uh, close the distance a little bit, so I'm going to put another post right there. And I'm just going to make the lines into barbed wire. Um, as I get back toward the vanishing point, obviously you won't see the barbs. They'll be too small to be seen. And this concludes our uh, farming perspective lesson. And I hope that the things that you learned in this lesson you can also apply to your own drawings with your own arrangements. So I'm sure you'll be able to with some practice. And you can add other things. You can add more trees. You can add people, animals. There's a lot of details that I didn't put in the buildings that you can add too.